Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be discussing whether Tesla cars are actually better for the environment versus internal combustion alternatives. This video is brought to you by Omaze and you might be wondering what in the world does a 1965 Volkswagen Beetle have to do with Tesla and the environment? Well, this is no ordinary Beetle. It's powered with Tesla batteries, it's fully electric, and Omaze is giving it away. All you have to do is go to omaze.com slash ee and enter for your chance to win, and every donation helps support the Planetary Society to advance space science and exploration. Now, the goal of this video is to determine if Teslas are better for the environment than other options, and we're going to focus on two aspects primarily efficiency, and the secondary focus will be emissions. If you're curious about emissions associated with producing an electric car, or the consequences of electric car battery production, I already have two videos covering this in detail, which I'd recommend you check out. So starting off with efficiency, I found a paper written by Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening. If you're unfamiliar with their names, they're the original founders of Tesla. In this paper, the two engineers were attempting to determine which energy sources for transportation would result in the absolute minimum amount of energy required, starting from the well and ending at the wheel. The document is well referenced, so feel free to examine the sources. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using more conservative numbers to make the case for Tesla a bit more challenging. All right, so we're trying to figure out what's the most efficient method of transportation. So of course, a part of that equation is going to be the fuel efficiency of the method of transportation which we are choosing. Now, there's many different energy sources which we can use uh, to have some form of transportation, and those different forms of transportation will have different fuel economy. So we're really going to focus on just four different methods. Uh, there's all kinds of different energy sources you could choose from, biodiesel, hybrids, hydrogen, uh, that kind of thing. So we're just going to look at several of these examples, the ones that we have available today, and analyze the best examples in each category. So for our energy source, the purpose of this video, we're discussing Tesla. So we're going to look at a Model 3 and a Model S, uh, which are battery electric. And the Model 3 standard range plus getting a mile per gallon equivalent combined rating of 133 mpg, the Model S long range getting a combined rating of 111. So this is EPA combined mpg rating that we are comparing here. For a diesel, uh, the most efficient diesel in the US is the Chevy Cruze, which has a combined fuel economy rating of 37 mpg. For gasoline, the purely gasoline, no hybrids here. Uh, the most efficient vehicle we have for 2019 in the US is the Mitsubishi Mirage, which is 39 mpg. And so you might be, this might be throwing a red flag at you saying, wait a minute, the most efficient diesel uh, gets worse fuel economy than the gasoline. And you know, the real world, there may be a, a diesel example that's going to beat the combined rating of the best gasoline example because diesel engines are more efficient. That said, hybrids are still going to win. Uh, so we have the best hybrid here, the Hyundai Ioniq, which is getting 58 mpg. So for the purposes of this video, we're just going to treat diesel and gasoline as the same because the numbers are pretty close. So we're just going to use gasoline with 39 mpg as our equivalent. If a diesel is capable of being better, then you can think of it getting closer to this hybrid uh, region right here with the Hyundai Ioniq. We're also going to be looking at hydrogen fuel cells. So this is a more efficient way of hydrogen transportation versus hydrogen combustion. And our most efficient example we have in the US market is the Honda Clarity Hydrogen, which will get a MPG equivalent of 68. So if you look at these numbers here, uh, one more that we're going to include for the USA, the average fuel economy for vehicles is about 25 MPG. Uh, so, you know, we're going to be comparing against best case scenario where the average is significantly lower uh, for the US. Now looking at all of these numbers we think immediately okay well obviously the Tesla wins here because it has the highest MPG rating but that does not take into consideration whatsoever where that energy comes from. So if all the energy came from renewable sources, great. We don't have to worry about emissions at all, so we don't really have to do this exercise. As we all know, that's not realistic. So we have to take a look at where does that energy actually come from to power each of these transportation methods. Okay, so the question we're now trying to answer is from the initial amount of energy we started with, 
how much of that energy actually makes it to the vehicle that can be used to scoot that vehicle along to wherever it's going. So we're going to look at the four different scenarios here. Gasoline, you can think of this as diesel, also hybrid, electric, and hydrogen. So starting with gasoline, we have extraction, we have refinement, we have transportation. It has to get to those fuel stations and then pumped into your car. There's an efficiency of this process, of each of these processes, and according to a study by multiple of the major oil companies, they say that this process is about 81.7% efficient. Now we're gonna give gasoline the benefit of the doubt here to make it a little bit more tricky for electric to actually win, just to make this comparison a bit harder for electric cars and say that this process is 90% efficient. So what does that mean? Well, if we started with 100 gallons of gasoline worth of energy sitting down there in the ground, then we have 90 gallons actually that we can use for our vehicle to move. Moving along to hybrids, those are of course using gasoline, so that efficiency number is exactly the same, 90%. Moving on to electric cars, we are going to assume 100% of the electricity used to power an electric car comes from fossil fuels in the form of natural gas. Now, that's not actually true. In the United States, natural gas makes up about 36% of our energy production, coal 28%, nuclear 19%, and renewables 17%. So there are definitely regions in the US which this math isn't necessarily gonna be accurate for because the energy production is far cleaner using nuclear or renewable. That said, we're kind of going worst case once again where we're using natural gas purely, entirely, 100% in order to power uh, our electric car. So purely on fossil fuels. So for natural gas, looking at the efficiency of the process, recovering that natural gas is about 97.5% efficient. Processing that natural gas, 97.5% efficient. Then generating uh, electricity using that natural gas, using a combined cycle turbine generator, that's gonna be about 60% efficient. Sending that electricity through the grid, so there's gonna be efficiency losses from sending uh, that power over the grid, that's gonna be about 92% efficient. And then finally we have to charge the car, so the energy has to come from the outlet and go into the battery of the car. And so that process, Tesla says, they get about 86% efficiency. So if we multiply all of these efficiencies out, 97.5 times this, times this, times this, times this, we get about 45% percent efficient about half that of gasoline so if we started with 100 gallons of gasoline that we can now use to power our gasoline vehicle we have 90 remaining in order if we start with 100 gallons for our electric vehicle we only have 45 remaining so a significant difference in efficiency as far as where that energy is coming from then moving along to hydrogen, the majority of hydrogen is created by reforming natural gas. So working through this once again, the entire process of recovering the natural gas, generating hydrogen, transporting and compressing that hydrogen, and then dumping it into the vehicle itself. Uh, best case, we're getting about 60% efficiency there. Now, we're not done yet because we can't actually just use the hydrogen that's sitting on the vehicle. It has to be converted into electricity. So that's what the fuel cell is doing. And the best fuel cells are gonna operate at about 60% efficiency. So once we've converted that into energy that we can actually use, we are sitting at just 36% efficiency. So we started with 100 gallons, we're now down to just 36 gallons that we can use to move this hydrogen vehicle worth of energy. Now, before we reach the final results, I know many will be wondering, doesn't the size of the battery pack matter? And yes, it absolutely does. The smaller battery pack in the Tesla powered Beetle, for example, which is good for about 100 miles, again, you can check this out at omaze.com ee, requires less material and thus less emissions to produce versus a larger battery pack capable of 300 miles of range. If you're curious about how the math works out on vehicle production, electric versus combustion, I have a separate video deep diving into this. So now we have all of the information to reach our conclusion. So we know what the production efficiency is for each of the different transportation methods, and we know what the fuel economy is for each of these different methods. So now we are going to multiply those together, and that will give us a distance. So what does this distance represent? Well, it tells us how far we can physically move the vehicle from one spot to another spot spot using just one gallon's worth of gasoline energy equivalency. So whether that's one gallon of gasoline or 33.7 kilowatt hours, which is the gasoline equivalent of one gallon, uh, that's how far we can travel with that one gallon from the very beginning stages where we're digging it up from the ground and then driving it, that vehicle, how far does it actually get? So multiplying that for the Model 3, 
we get 60 miles on that one gallon. With the Model S, we get 50. Now for hydrogen, you'll notice this is a different number than what we started with in the beginning. That's because this is about the energy efficiency of a good electric car. Once we've already done the conversion on board of that hydrogen to electricity, it's essentially just an electric car. So it gets better fuel economy, uh, assuming that we've already taken into account that conversion uh, of hydrogen into electricity. Multiplying that across, we get 47 miles. The best hybrid getting 52 miles, the best gasoline getting 35 miles, and the average gasoline getting just 23 miles. So this is where it becomes pretty clear just how efficient electric cars are. You can see that the distance a Model 3 is going to travel on that one gallon's worth of energy is 60 miles, about triple that of the average gasoline vehicle of 23 miles. And you may look at this best hybrid and say, well, this is 52. It's getting better than that Model S. But keep in mind, these are in completely different performance categories here. Also, this Model S weighs 2,000 pounds more. Also, we're assuming it's getting its energy from nat natural gas. And also, we're assuming a good efficiency for that crude oil conversion into gasoline. So there's a lot of assumptions there which are giving this hybrid the benefit of the doubt and it just barely squeaks by. If you were to look at the gasoline equivalent of this exact car, the Hyundai Ioniq, it's actually going to be much more efficient as an electric car. Uh, so the apples to apples comparison, the electric car would still be winning there. And then looking at uh, now emissions. And so what we do here is we look at the source fuel. In this case, we're using natural gas for the electrics and hydrogen, crude oil for the gasoline. And this source fuel has a certain amount of carbon in it uh, from the beginning. And so we're assuming that we're going to convert that carbon into CO2 through this process here. And so by doing some math, you you can determine how many grams of CO2 you create per mile for each of these different options. Source fuel here being natural gas, source fuel here being crude oil. Of course, if this was not natural gas, if it was something like hydropower or you know, if it was, let's say, uh, solar power, then of course these emissions are going to go down to basically zero uh, on a per mile basis driven. So going down the line here, starting with our Model 3, we're at 107 grams per mile. The Model S, 128. The Hydrogen, 137. The Hybrid, 170. Then our best gasoline, 252. And then our average gasoline, 394. And remember, why are these a little bit different? Well, burning natural gas is going to be a little bit uh, less CO2 than burning petroleum. So that's why you'll see even the hydrogen wins out there, even though it had uh, a lower distance. And then also, you know, as kind of a sanity check, I wanted to look at what's the average uh, emissions of a vehicle in the US based on the EPA. Uh, so this is what I'm saying this math checks out to 394. The EPA says the average vehicle in the US emits 404 grams per mile of CO2. So the math actually does work out pretty accurate to get close to what the EPA says average, actual average is. Uh, and something that's interesting to look at here is if we look at the worst EV on the market, uh, the worst 2019 EV, which is a 6,000 pound uh, electric SUV, its emissions per mile are 192, assuming all of its energy comes from natural gas. So even the worst electric car on the market has half the emissions of the average gasoline vehicle. And we're not even considering that gasoline vehicles are also going to have sulfur emissions, carbon monoxide emissions, nitrogen oxide emissions, particulate matter, hydrocarbons. Uh, so once you start doing the math on these things, what's cool is that it just becomes very obvious. Yes, the electric car from an emission standpoint is going to be far superior from an efficiency standpoint is far superior. And you could also go back and say, you know what, production emissions of something uh, like solar power is not as efficient as using natural gas. And you'd be correct. And so these distances would go down here. However, these emissions would dramatically go down versus these would not change. So what's cool about electric cars is they will get better with time as the grid improves versus these really won't. You know, we're reaching very high peak efficiency 
days uh, in gasoline cars. There's not too much more left there to be achieved, and yet electric cars will get so much cleaner simply from cleaning up the grid. So a neat experiment uh, to kind of go through the math of how this all works. Again, I'd recommend checking out my video on electric car production and batteries and their impacts on the environment if you have not already, where you'll find that an electric car can actually offset its production emissions in as little as two years compared to a gasoline vehicle. So a big thank you to Amaze for sponsoring the video. Remember, for your chance to win the one-of-a-kind 1965 convertible VW Bug powered with Tesla batteries, head to amaze.com ee. Every donation helps support the Planetary Society. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.